Hi, everybody. This is JJ Long from JJ Artworks, and welcome to episode 73 of our podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We truly appreciate it. In this week's episode, I want to piggyback on last week's episode. Last week, if you didn't tune in, we talked about the multi-passionate dilemma that a lot of us artists and creative entrepreneurs experience, where we have all these dreams and all these goals in life, and it's really hard to focus just on one thing. And there's lots of uh, issues that we have when we are multi-passionate. We feel scattered. We feel like we have shiny object syndrome. We feel uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out. And last week, <clears throat> I wanted to talk about some tips and tricks, but last week's episode sort of went over time. So this week, I really want to focus on sharing a lot of tangible tips and tricks to help focus on what projects you should be doing at any given moment in time. Because this is something that <clears throat> I continue to struggle with. It's something that I'm always tweaking out and I'm trying new things. But I do feel like I have a handful of tips and tricks that can help you decide for yourself what the, the right answers are for you because everybody's different. But let me talk about, because last week we talked about why you might be uh, experiencing the multi-passionate dilemma. Like maybe you have just a ton of different ideas. You want to write that book. You want to get in that band and, and tour on stage. You want to create that series of paintings. You want to act in that play or, you know, whatever that is. You want to start a, a brand new career you want to start doing voiceover work or doing some projects like that and you just feel very very scattered and uh, it happens to all of us especially if you're an artist and you are you, you know because they there's a saying that that goes art fuels art so chances are if you're a writer uh, you're also a musician if you're a musician you're also an actor if you're an actor you're also a painter so th a lot of us artists sort of dabble uh, and are actually really good at a bunch of different uh, art disciplines, a bunch of different art forms. So it's actually a, a really cool problem to have if you think about it, if you're multi-talented. But it can get overwhelming <clears throat> because right now I probably have, no lie, like 20 to 30 passion projects that I'd like to work on right now. But over the years, I've learned how to sort of simplify things and, and kind of take take uh, take care of my dreams according to my needs. So that's the first thing we're gonna talk about. I think the fastest way to figure out what pro passion project you should focus on is to figure out what your needs are right now. And I'm not just talking about what your creative needs are, but as a, as a person, as, as a whole. Are you hurting financially? Do you really need to focus on making money? Are you out of shape? Do you need to focus on your health? are you know you you you're not expressing yourself in a certain category that you really really yearn to express yourself with like if you're a painter and you haven't painted for like several years it's like that that's kind of a must now so you really need to get clear on what your needs are and you also have to understand that projects do take time to complete so for example and this is something that <clears throat> i think pops up for a lot of us and I think this might be one of the most common issues that we have as artists is that we need to focus on making more money a lot of people feel financially unstable it happens to a lot of us artists and creative entrepreneurs and we're like I, I really need to have consistent cash flow coming in I want to have predictable income and that that's like a, a really really deep-seated need that needs to happen like right now but I also have this desire to write a full length album like you know audio compilation the cd and then i also have this desire to write this series of books and then i also have this desire to do this, this body of these bodies of paintings or, or whatever it is i want to get back on stage i want to act in plays i want to do uh, musical theater or, you know whatever it is and it, it's it's very difficult because you know that a lot of those things don't lead to money right away and i think that's your answer right there if the finance thing is the main thing you need right now. Um, perfect example. For my company, the paint party business is sort of like our bread and butter. So that's the thing where we generate, I'd say like 80% of our income. The rest of the money I make from maybe selling original oil and acrylic paintings and prints, people might hire me for coaching or they might hire me to do a commission painting or something 
or they might hire me to do some type of um, sp speaking engagement, whether it be like an author lecture or a keynote speech. So those are just some quick um, revenue streams they have coming in. But then I also do have little trickles coming in from book sales. I, I get royalties every month from Amazon. And then I also get uh, little trickles from music sales. So I get uh, streaming royalties from like Spotify, Pandora, all those different um, platforms. But if you're hurting financially and you're not a prolific, for example, a prolific musician that has a proven track record of making a ton of money from music and you need money right now and you're really uh, a painter that has a track record of making a lot of money selling out of art galleries or something, right? <clears throat> And you say to yourself, oh, but I really want to write that song. And, you know, and, and instead of being conscious that money is a huge need for you right now and a huge priority, you jump ship and go right to writing music. And you spend like months writing this song or this demo, EP, CD, whatever it is. And you don't really make any money for several months. And then you're like, oh, this music thing didn't work. The music thing's working, but it takes time. It takes time to manifest. It takes time to build momentum. And right now you need money. So the, the I feel the answer is to, and, it, and it's hard. It's really, really difficult to do this. It's like you have to like ninja your brain somehow. But if you have a proven track record of making money with painting, you can't just abandon the painting. You got to keep up with the painting curriculum. You need to keep creating inventory to sell out of the art galleries. You got to keep doing the art festivals and all that. But your next quick task should be to work on the music and get and get that to a point where it's monetized. If if finances and making consistent money is important to you. Um, you can work on as many creative projects at the same time as you want. As long as you understand what your needs are and that things take time. So if you were just to focus on, say you are an art, uh, a painter and you did want to focus on writing like a full length CD, if you were just to focus on the full length CD and abandon painting and a day job and all these other activities, all these other responsibilities, if you were just to focus on the music, you would make money with the music faster if you were to do it sort of like in the background as like a side hustle while you're building, continuing to build your, your professional painting business. But it really comes down to what your needs are. So if you're financially stable and say you're making passive income and you're financially free and you're listening to this, the money's not really a huge need and you just really want to express yourself with music, then do that right now if you can afford to do it. But I, I think you know, 90% of the people that are listening to this, you're probably maybe hurting financially or you don't have predictable income coming in because uh, that happens to a lot of us artists and creative entrepreneurs. So a lot of the times I say, focus on the money, focus on doing that, but you can do things at the same time, but just understand it's not going to lead to money right away. For example, and, and I see a lot of my, my other friends making this mistake and it's, and, and I've, been a culprit of this as well. I've made this mistake, but I have a lot, a lot of talented friends and also family members that instead of pursuing their purpose in life, which is to be an artist and share their authentic voice with, with an audience and add value to the world that way, money becomes such a stressor that instead of focusing on different ways to make money from the creativity, they start they turn into a DoorDash driver or they do Uber or they start waiting tables or they work at a grocery store or they work at a gas station or they do something where it's I punch in and I punch out and I get a consistent paycheck. And then what happens is they keep putting off their professional art career further and further and further. And it's life's too short, man. Life's too short. And, you know, I'm not perfect. I I'm not. Uh, you know, you know, super wealthy at the moment, but I can honestly say that every moment of the day I'm working toward one of my dreams. And when it comes down to it, and now I'm, I'm kind of going on a tangent talking, 
<laughs> talking a lot about finances, but I just, I, I, it, 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 it kills me to see a lot of my super talented friends go down the path of security. Um, it, I mean, it's an admirable thing to do and I'm not here to judge, especially if you have, if you're married and, and you know, you, you have kids, you got to do what you can do for your family. But <clears throat> if you have a choice and I mean, there's a reason why I'm still single to this day and I'm, I'm not settled down is because I want to establish my career first and really be able to present my best self to my future spouse. But that, that's another podcast episode, but just don't give up on your, your passions and dreams in life. Okay. So this is just a quick, quick side note, but let's get back to how to, how to, <laughs> how to focus on what you should choose. So the first thing is figure out what your needs are. You know, if you're financially doing fine and money's not a big deal, or, you know, if money is a big deal, then focus on the creative pursuits that you know that you possibly have some proof and a proven track record that can generate money fast, right? So I know that if I, I, I can sell paintings, I did it for 10 years before I started the paint party business. So instead of me being like, you know what, I, I need money right now. Let's try to write a 500 page book and become a New York Times bestselling author. That's probably not the fastest way to make money. The fastest way for me to make money is to book paint parties and sell original paintings on art galleries or hit up my email list and try to get people to, you know, buy my work. Um, but having all that said, once you figure out what your needs are, <clears throat> you might have a list of 10 art projects that you want to pursue. And, and you're like, this is, this is my dream list. I want to do this. Perfect. Like I said earlier, and I, and I highly recommend that you plant all these seeds and you keep moving to the, the beat of your own drum. You do you. <laughs> I can't stand people like, no, you have to focus on this one thing and you can't do anything, anything else until you've completed this one thing. I get it. It makes logical sense. But if you're an artist and you're multi-passionate, it's really hard to have the shut off switch with like 80% of like a bunch of other stuff that you want to do. So just understand you can do everything. And it's just that if you do a bunch of projects at once, it's going to take a little bit longer for things to manifest. And I sort of tell people, you know, if you have a list of 10, 20 passion projects you want to do, that's great. I say, go all in, do them all. But if you have a gut feeling that your soul is nudging you toward, um, toward a certain direction, so say you want to write music and then you want to launch a, do a podcast and then you also want to write a book and then you want to, uh, you know, do a series of paintings and you want to start a blog. I don't, I don't know. And, and last week we talked about the introverted artist and then the extroverted artist. And you're really not sure what direction to move in. Really spend some time to meditate be alone with your thoughts and really, really think about, you know, you're probably one to 2% more pointed toward one direction, whether it be introverted art or extroverted art. And again, if you weren't listening last week, extroverted art is more performance energy art. So you're delivering a uh, finished project on stage, whether you're a musician, actor, things like that, a speaker. Introverted art is more behind closed doors you know, burn in the midnight oil with some candlelight and you're working on a painting and doing solitary work like writing maybe a book or a novel or a nonfiction book or something like that. Maybe you're composing music on your own. So those are the two different uh, sides of the fence I feel that art has fallen. <clears throat> and if some of you might know, you know, I'm 75% an extroverted artist and only 25% introverted, then you probably want to focus on the passion projects that have more toward expressing yourself performing, right? And if, say, you're 75% introverted and only 25% extroverted, or maybe you're, you're 100% introverted and you just don't like, you have stage fright and you just don't want to put yourself out there, then out of the introverted projects you're doing, your soul is probably nudging you to do something a little bit more than the other, whether it be, you know what, I really want to work on that, that novel that really gets me excited and, you know, writing a new blog that, that can, that can wait, that'll always be there. But like, I really, I'm motivated to write this novel right now. So I think if you do more introspection 
you will uh, come to your own conclusions. But as far as having shiny object syndrome or the fear of missing out, because those are, those are two really big things that I hear people talking about, and I'm, I, I'm tired of being accused of having shiny object syndrome. If I didn't have shiny object syndrome, I wouldn't have started virtual paint parties during the pandemic. I wouldn't have you know, discovered that and we wouldn't be here today doing certain things. Like if you don't take some type of risks on new activities, then you'll never know. And like G.I. Joe says, knowing is half the battle. I'm totally dating myself right now. But anyways, I'm going to finish there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Truly, truly appreciate it. If this is your first time listening to us on Spotify, please subscribe. If this is your first time watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. We come out with weekly content stemming around entrepreneurship. And we just want to help out other artists and creative entrepreneurs uh, to the best of our ability as we also grow our business as well. And uh, just thank you so much for your love and support. Truly appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys next week in episode 74. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.